as is our custom, this is the first Sunday of the month, so we're going to preach from one of the Psalms, and we're up to the 27th Psalm. And the title that I would put on this Psalm is found really in the last verse. Be of good courage. You know, it's uh, easy to be scared of things in life, isn't it? And fear can be good for us. I mean, fear, fear can keep us from a lot of trouble. But you know how it is, little children around someone, and they may just be just as happy as it can be, and then it thunders, and somebody says, it thundered! And it just scar that child, from then on the child's scared of thunder. You know, or do it, there's water, or there's a dog, or there's a, who hadn't heard this one? Snake! And then the rest of your life, you're just scared of snakes. I mean, just even thinking about it, it's, it scares you, doesn't it? And there's a lot of fears in life. And, and there's some things that are really scary. Uh, now, I know parents are probably more scared than the children, but you may not remember those first times out to school, but that can be scary for a little child going off to school. And mama's going to leave me here, you know, and think how scary that would be. And then, then you go to college. And, and that can be scary, too. And then you, when you find out what you've got to study and what you've got to learn, that can, that can frighten you. And then you've got to get a job and get out and take care of yourself and then get married. Now, that can be scary. Uh, <laughs> Tommy said, yeah, <laughs> okay. <laughs> Tommy, it might be scary right now where you're sitting, okay? <laughs> But, and, and then I'll tell you, little children come along and you feel that responsibility and, and watching them grow up. I tell you, you'll finally get up where you think you've got things taken care of. Man, I have done this. I am handling life. And then what do you hear? Well, the doctor says, well, you have cancer. But that can be scary. Uh, every stage of life, all the way into those very latter years, the, the, the book of Ecclesiastes, in that last chapter, talks about those who are aged and, and they're scared of, of just a little step in the way. That can be scared. You don't want to fall. Everything in life, there's things for fears. And yet, the Bible talks about us living triumphantly and living courageously. How do you do that? And that's what this psalm is about. And we're going to talk about David. And this psalm's probably, well, I'm not going to say probably. I'll say this. The commentators of these psalms, it's common for them to speculate, let me put it this way, that this psalm may have been of the occasion when David had to flee from Saul. Now here he'd been a shepherd boy, and then he'd been in Saul's army, and but Saul became jealous, and all of a sudden, now his very life is at risk because of the very king he was trying to serve. What is he going to do? Well, if he stays, he and Saul are going to have a conflict. One of them are going to get killed. I tell you, David doesn't want to kill Saul. He doesn't want to get killed by Saul. Jonathan tells David, you make haste and flee. And I can just see at the beginning of this psalm, David, I've got to, I've got, I'm going to be a fugitive now. That would be scary, wouldn't it? Knowing that the king is coming after you to find you and track you down. And so he's running out into the wilderness, running out into the darkness. What's he going to find? Well, that would be scary in life. And yet David lived courageously. Let's see how he did that. There is a song that was sung at a wedding when Laurie and I got married one of the songs that our friends sang at our wedding opened up like this it said Father hear the prayer we offer not for ease that prayer shall be but for strength that we may ever live our lives courageously how do you live a life of courage. It doesn't mean you don't have any fears. Well, it's not Bible that said this. This is, this is what John Wayne says, okay? This wasn't Bible, but, but John Wayne said uh, courage is, is not the lack of fear. It's saddling up and going ahead and doing what you need to do even though you are afraid. How do you master those fears and live with courage? Well, we can learn some of that from how David did that. 
And so let's read this psalm, and then I'm going to carry you through it again and, and see what some of the things that, that he did that enabled him to live that, that very frightening, heroic life he lived and to live it with courage. Here's how the psalm goes. It's a psalm of David. The Lord is my light and my salvation. Whom shall I fear? The Lord is the strength of my life. Of whom shall I be afraid? When the wicked, even my enemies and my foes, came upon me to eat up my flesh, they stumbled and fell. Though a host should encamp against me, my heart shall not fear. Though war should rise against me, in this will I be confident. One thing have I desired of the Lord, that will I seek after, that I may dwell in the house of the Lord all the days of my life, to behold the beauty of the Lord and to inquire in his temple. For in the time of trouble he shall hide me in his pavilion. In the secret of his tabernacle shall he hide me. He shall set me up upon a rock. And now shall my head be lifted up above mine enemies round about me. Therefore will I offer in his tabernacle sacrifices of joy. I will sing, yea, I will sing praises unto the Lord. Hear, O Lord, when I cry with my voice. Have mercy also upon me and answer me. When thou saidst, Seek ye my face, my heart said unto thee, Thy face, Lord, will I seek. Hide not thy face far from me. Put not thy servant away in anger. Thou hast been my help. Leave me not, neither forsake me, O God of my salvation. When my mother and my father forsake me, then the Lord will take me up. Teach me thy way, O Lord, and lead me in a plain path because of mine enemies. Deliver me not over unto the will of mine enemies, for false witnesses are risen up against me, and such as breathe out cruelty. I had fainted. Unless I had believed to see the goodness of the Lord in the land of the living, Wait on the Lord. Be of good courage. And he shall strengthen thy heart. Wait, I say, on the Lord. Those words. Be of good courage. It's about 100, 150 years. I forgot the exact time. Before Christ was born... The, the Greeks had, had overrun the Mediterranean in that culture. And all over the Mediterranean, the people, they, they would know their own languages, but they would also speak Greek. And Greek became really the common spoken tongue of that, that entire world. Alexander the Great conquered that world. He established a city and named it after himself, the city of Alexandria in Egypt. And there he had a great library where books came from all over the world as a great center of learning. We might remember uh, Apollos was from Alexandria in the New Testament and he was known for his great learning and his wisdom. And the Jews had gone to Alexandria with their copy of the Hebrew scriptures. But hardly anyone spoke Hebrew. Even in their homeland, they might learn Hebrew in the synagogues, but their common tongue was Aramaic. And the world was speaking Greek. And so they got 70 scholars among the Jews that knew the Greek and knew the Hebrew, and they translated the Hebrew into Greek. And that is called the Septuagint translation. It's a translation of the Old Testament. Now this is 100 years or more before Jesus was born when they did this. And by the time of Christ, many of the people were read when they read the Old Testament, they'd read out of that Greek translation instead of the Hebrew. Many of them would. When they came to this psalm, and it says, Be of good courage. 
whatever that was in the Hebrew, the way they decided to put that into the Greek was with these words. Act like men. That's what they said. But we find this in the New Testament. And in the King James Version, in 1 Corinthians chapter 16, in verse 13, Paul says, in warning those Corinthians, he said, Now watch ye, stand fast in the faith, quit ye like men, and be strong. The Greek words he used that are translated into English, quit ye like men, I'm trying to have that Septuagint translation of the 27th Psalm. And, and that word quit, this, this is old language. The, the modern versions will say something like, now you act like men, or you behave like men, or you show courage like a man does. And it kind of presupposes that men ought to be courageous. God has made us with the ability to face life with courage. And Paul is saying, now you need to act like that. You need to behave like men and act like men. Now, let's go into this psalm. I can just see David headed out. I've got to find a refuge in the wilderness. And it's growing dark. And David is going to face those fears. And here's what he does. The Lord is my light and my salvation. Of whom shall I fear? We might ask, why should I be afraid? The Lord's going to be with me. He'll give me the light through this dark period of my life. And God gives us light. If we'll take advantage of it, we've got the light of God's Word to show us how we ought to live. And, and if we'll come to a, a familiarity with it and study it, I'm not, it's going to be more than just listening to your preacher. You need to get a Bible you can read and study and, and learn for yourself. And then as life comes upon you and things happen, you're going to say, uh, you know, the Bible taught me how to deal with a problem like this. And I know what to do because I've got the light. We read in Psalm 119, verses 105, Thy word is a lamp unto my feet and a light unto my path. And Jesus shows us the way. We read in John 8 and verse 12, Then spake Jesus again to them, saying, I'm the light of the world. He that followeth me shall not walk in darkness, but shall have the light of life. And then in 1 John 1 and verse 7, Walk in the light is he is in the light. Now don't read the Bible like a, like a magic book saying, well, now the Bible's going to show what's going to happen in the future and I'll know exactly what to do when it comes because I'll understand all these things and, and I'll be ready. Well, the Bible does tell us a few things that are going to happen in the future, but the focus of the Bible is preparing you for whatever happens. And so once we learn how to walk in this light and how to, how to let this be our guide through life, then, then we can have this confidence. Why should I be afraid? God showed me what I need to do. So let come what may. I know how I'm going to respond. I know some things that are going to stay solid in my life because I've got this light. Look what he says next. The Lord is the strength of my life. Of whom shall I be afraid? With God is your strength, why should you fear? We read in the book of uh, Philippians chapter 4 and verse 13, where Paul said, I can do all things through Christ which strengtheneth me. There was a very colorful preacher out on the frontier by the name of uh, Lanzo Dow. Now, um, he, he was... Uh, Oh, he was a very popular preacher, and, and really no one really wanted to claim him because he had a lot of strange ways about him. But, but Lanzo Dow, I was reading where Lanzo Dow used to read this, and, and he'd kind of put on a show while he's preaching, and that's why people liked him, you know. But he would read, it says, Paul said here, I can do all things. Paul, I don't believe that. In fact, I'll wager you that you can't do all things. And he'd reach out and pull out of some money and put it on his Bible. Said, Paul can't do all things. I'll bet he can. I'll wager that. Look what he said. I can do all things through Christ which strengtheneth me. Oh, 
For Christ who strengthened me. Well, the, the deal's off. And he put his money back in his wallet, you know. And he's just putting on a show. But what he's trying to do is impress people with the passage. We, we can't do everything. Not, none of us can do everything. And sometimes that, that we might think we ought to be able to do everything, and we can't. I'll tell you what we can do. We can all do everything God wants us to do. God will not require of us that which is impossible for us to do. And yet God sets some really high things out there for us, doesn't he? But we can do it. And we can draw strength from the things that Jesus has taught us. He will strengthen us so that we can do everything God wants us to do. When we've done that, we know we've done what we need to do. It says, when the wicked, even my enemies and my foes, came upon me to eat up my flesh, they stumbled and fell. I want you to think about an enemy coming at you. And what happens? Well, he comes up to you before he gets to you. He stumbles and falls. It, it, those things aren't going to hurt you. And I read this. I thought about David and Goliath. Isn't that what happened? Let, let me read this right quick, this story. I remember this from the time I was a little boy being thrilled over this. 1 Samuel 17, 44 through 47. And the Philistine said unto David, Come to me, and I'll give thy flesh to the fowls of the air, and to the beast of the field. Then David said to the Philistine, Thou comest to me with a sword, and with a spear, and with a shield. But I come to thee in the name of the Lord of hosts, the God of the armies of Israel, whom thou hast defiled. This day will the Lord deliver me into thy hand, and I will smite thee and take thine head from thee, and I will give the carcass of the host of the Philistines this day unto the fowls of the air, unto the wild beasts of the earth, and all the earth may know that there is a God in Israel, and all this assembly shall know that the Lord saveth not with with sword and spear, for the battle is the Lord's, and he'll give you into my hand. You know what happened? And giant comes running at David with all his equipment and all his armor, and this shepherd boy pulls out his sling and takes him down with one stone, and he falls before him. Now that, we didn't have the confidence some of these things look mighty frightening that we're about to face, but God can take care of it. And so many things that, that we have worried about never took place, didn't they? I mean, we just lost sleep over something, and then it all just kind of went away. And you wonder, why was I worried about that? I remember this one lady I heard about that uh, um, everything came out and worked out well, and her response was, well, all that worrying paid off. <laughs> Well, it's not the worry that pays off. God takes care of us. And, and we can have that confidence as we face things that are frightening to us. David said, though a host, that's an army. Put a, put a whole army up there. They're encamped against me. I'm not going to fear. My heart shall not be afraid. Though war should rise against me, in this will I be confident. Now, one of the reasons David could be so sure he had his desire on the right thing. He wanted to spend eternity with his Lord. He wanted to worship him. There's a lady that my mother knew, and I've told you this story, and she really wasn't doing very well. We were sitting down at church, and she came walking up, and my sweet mother, she asked, how are you doing? And it was obvious this woman is not doing well. And my mother says, how are you doing? And here's what she said. She said, well, I'm not doing very well, but I'm going to do better. Now, I might have to die and go to heaven to do it, but I'm going to do better. And with that kind of confidence and that kind of hope, what in life is going to get us down? David says, one thing have I desired of the Lord that I will seek after, that I may dwell in the house of the Lord all the days of my life to behold the beauty of the Lord and to inquire in his temple. David's heart was set on God. 
For in the time of trouble, he'll hide me in his pavilion. In the secret of his tabernacle, he'll hide me. He'll set me upon a rock. And now shall mine head be lifted up above my enemies round about me. Therefore will I offer in his tabernacle sacrifices of joy. I will sing, yea, I will sing praises unto my God. All those enemies round about. And what's David doing? Well, I can, I can sing. I want to worship God. God's going to make sure I can do that. And he had his heart and his goal set on the right thing. And nothing in this life can take that away. And then we have this beautiful prayer. It's a very humble prayer from verses 7 through 12. He says, Hear, O Lord, when I cry with my voice. Sometimes a prayer is just almost just a cry, isn't it? If you've lived very long in this life, there have been times you have cried in your prayers unto God, asking for his help. God hears. Hear, O Lord, when I cry with my voice. Have mercy also upon me and answer me. When thou saidest, Seek my face, my heart said unto thee, Thy face will I seek. Hide not thy face from me. Put not thy servant away in anger. Thou hast been my help. Leave me not, neither forsake me, O God of my salvation. When my father and my mother forsake me, and the Lord will take me up. You know how much you depended on mom and dad when you were little? It used to be the most horrible thought that I could have. If something happened to mother and daddy, what would happen to me? And as close as your parents are, you know, they could even forsake you, but the Lord won't. And in the normal course of life, your parents will forsake you. And that there'll come a time when when they'll pass on into eternity and they're going to leave you here without their help. But you're not without help because the Lord's going to be there and he's going to look after you even better than your mama and your daddy would look after you. He says, teach me thy way, O Lord, and lead me in a plain path because of my enemies. Deliver me not over to the will of my enemies for false witnesses arisen up against me and such as breathe out cruelty. Our Lord himself could have prayed a prayer like this. We read in the New Testament at his trial. Now the chief priest and the elders and all the council sought false witnesses against Jesus to put him to death. Jesus, <coughs> at the end, commended his soul to God in heaven. And so I had fainted unless I had believed to see the goodness of the Lord in the land of the living. We are saved by hope. Having hope out there helps us through this life. Otherwise, we would faint. We might give up. We might think, I can't do this and, and be overwhelmed. But with that hope, we will see the Lord in the land of the living. Tom Holland used to talk about it when he would do a funeral. He talked about people that have left the land of the dying and have gone to the land of the of the living as a life beyond this life that we seek and that we can obtain and having that set before us we can face this life with courage it says in Romans 8 24 we're saved by hope these words reminded me of what Job said in Job 19 25 through 27 for I know that my redeemer liveth and that he will stand at the latter day upon the earth. And though after my skin worms destroy this body, yet in my flesh shall I see God, whom I shall see for myself. My eyes shall behold, and not another, though my reins be consumed within me. Well, the Lord did come to earth, and the Lord did rise from the dead. And the Lord tells us we'll rise from the dead, and we'll see him. 
And we read in John 5, 25 through 28, Verily, verily, I say unto you, this is what Jesus said, The hour is coming and now is when the dead shall hear the voice of the Son of God, and they that hear shall live. Marvel not at this, for the hour is coming in the which all that are in the grave shall hear his voice and shall come forth. They that have done good unto the resurrection of life, and they that have done evil unto the resurrection of damnation. So you want to do good. This is the book that shows us how to do good. We sing that song, are you ready for the judgment day? We're going to be ready, and we're not going to fear in that day. Because the Lord's going to be with us. Wait on the Lord. Be of good courage, and he shall strengthen thy heart. Wait, I say, on the Lord. We get too anxious sometimes. God works all things out according to the pleasure of his will and according to his own time. We need to put our confidence and trust there. And we'll wait. We'll wait. We're not going to compromise and do something we shouldn't do out of anxiety or because we're in too big a hurry. No, we're going to stick with the right. And we'll wait. We'll wait. And we'll see the salvation of the Lord. Be of good courage. Our Lord used to say this when he was on the earth. And the, it's translated three ways. There's... It, this is a different Greek word, and when you get back to it, it's the same idea. But this word has three different meanings. Be of good courage, when our Lord would say that to those who were fearful. He was saying, be of good comfort. That's that settlement in the heart. And be of good cheer. And these things that cause others to fear... We can face it all with courage and comfort and cheer. Let me get back to you to that hymn. Father, hear the prayer we offer, not for ease that prayer shall be, but for strength that we may ever live our lives courageously. Three more verses, second verse. Not forever in green pastures do we ask our way to be but the steep and rugged pathway may we tread rejoicingly. Third verse. Not forever by still waters would we idly rest and stay, but would smite the living fountains from the rocks along the way. And then the fourth verse. Be our strength in hours of weakness. In our wanderings be our guide through endeavor, failure, danger. Father, be thou at our side. It's a beautiful hymn, isn't it? The sentiments of that hymn are like the sentiments of this psalm. And we can live courageously. And so... We're to gather together and to teach and admonish one another and to build each other up. And I hope that's been accomplished today as we've looked at thy word. And we'll resolve in our hearts, yes, I'm going to live courageously for my Lord all the days of my life. And you begin that walk with the Lord when you hear and believe and obey the gospel of Jesus Christ. All those former sins are washed away. We start anew. And we walk with him all the way. Into eternity. Like a little movie said, to eternity and beyond. Well, that's what we have before us as we walk with our Lord. So if you'd like to come forward this morning, confess his name before men, and be baptized into Christ, then you have the opportunity to do it as we sing this invitation song.